and Free Radical Media, The Fifth Column, and Pontiac Tribune. Right here, you should be looking at this live on the Pontiac Tribune. I'm here with the flower guy, Rob Weber. Look at this guy. Hi. Uh, so, Rob. Uh, Bernie's taking him a bunch of time, so it's only uh, Hillary and Trump that don't want to fly over for peace. I don't know what that says about them. Uh, but uh, all the way down, uh, you know, whether you're talking John Kasich, or Jeff Bush, they're, you know, they're all taking Everybody else. Probably uh, three. Three, okay, so there's three. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. Of the people right here. How many people do you react? Well, uh, but, uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, Marco Rubio's uh, staff initially, they were utterly just confused by what to do. They kicked me out, they called the police, and it was getting weird, but, uh, you know, I just kind of asserted my right to exist in public. And I happen to have uh, two, uh, or two or three or sheets of very, very big four by eight foam core, and proceeded to make a gigantic pro Marco Rubio sign um, that said, uh, Marco makes friends. Um, and and this, this has been my strategy all along, to just be positive so that they couldn't say that it was a protest. Now, you take a look at me, and you know that I'm kind of, well, they don't want me to move around. Uh, but uh, I, I guess someone at Fox News was there and got wind of the thing and said, listen, he's just going to keep killing you with kindness. Take his damn flowers, or he's going to make a bigger sign that says how much, you know, professing his love for Mark. Yeah. Just, you know, get it done with it. You know, and I, I think, I mean, that's really been the message, is uh, kill them with kindness, give them positivity. I would say it's a symbolic gesture that if you become president, you'll have peace on your return. How can you argue with that? Well, I've got to ask, uh, a lot of you may have seen it, maybe some of you haven't, but uh, Rod was at the RNC. The Rod. Rod. It's all right. Was at the uh, RNC as well, and uh, the group he was with uh, were... Well, woken up in the morning by the Illyria Police Department and uh, the FBI. The FBI, ICE, HSI, Homeland Security, and the local Illyria Police. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, it sucks. Uh, I mean, for starters, um, you know, we'd gotten in pretty late. You know, we're out of towners, uh, and we had a friend you know, that was uh, staying there. It was a uh, you know friendly to the protest and activists or various movements. They didn't ask a lot of questions from us. We didn't ask a lot of questions from them. Uh, they were just peaceful people that wanted to help out. And uh, so uh, we're woken up. The next thing we know, uh, 8, 8.30, uh, early enough in the morning, considering we've gotten at 5.30. So we were on very little sleep. And I heard some kind of commotion. And I look up, and my friend Dave, who had chosen the couch on the fourth to sleep, he's in the window with his hands up. And there's a bunch of FBI guys swarming around him. and. You know, my first and only thought was get to the cameras uh, because the cameras are the only proof that this is going on. And you know what? Um, I could have I could have blocked them down with your standard libertarian checklist of I'm an American citizen and I'm being detained. I could go. However, the thing was is that they were entering into this domicile, which did not belong to me. I didn't know the people who were staying there very well, and so I just I, I, what I decided to do was focus on the cameras. The guy whose house it was. We believed that he had gone to work for the day. This was not, it was not the case. He decided to blow it off of an to us. And uh, Jose, who was our, you know, the friend of the friend, he was in contact there. He was the first one up and uh, went to the door and he just kind of disappeared for a bit. And I quietly tried to uh, get my clothes on, at which point the, the police just, you know, they came through the door. Oh, you know, they didn't kick it, kick it in. Uh, well, they certainly opened it without anyone's permission um, and said, drop the pants! And I'm thinking to myself, um, okay, I see that you're police of some kind, FBI. Um, I will put the pants, you know, I drop the pants, I'll put the pants down. I don't want to get shot. Um, and, you know, you hear from the peanut gallery on YouTube that, you know, just tell them not to, you know, you know, tell them to go away. And when they're in the house, there's really no telling them to go away. I, you know, I'd like YouTube to remember this. Um, and, and you know, also another another part of it is I was knew I, I knew it was being filmed. So 
Uh, another part is uh, go along with it, don't get shot, uh, you know, to a degree. And so, you know, when they did bring me outside, and of, of course they, they wouldn't let me put the pants on inside. I had to kick it to them, and I was forced to, you know, stand outside my drawer and decide, you know, and uh, put it on there. Which, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it's, it's I, I believe it's a bit of a humiliation tactic. Sure, absolutely. It's an intimidation. Um, so I get out there, they're asking for my driver's license at, you know, at which point I just, I kind of try to quiet up because Jose, he's the one who was out first. He was doing all the talking. And usually, that's the position I'm used to being in. I've got dozens of uh, police videos where I'm doing cock block maneuvers on them. Uh, so I'm, I'm familiar with the process, but Jose was doing just fine. I viewed my role at that point to simply be the guy with the camera and, uh, you know, not get kicked out or have anything weird, just to be kind of in the background, like a fly on the wall. So Jose did most of the talking. Uh, he got them to admit that there wasn't a warrant, uh, which, you know, and again, it took a lot of talking. And this is, I think, one of the things that people on online don't really understand is armchair activism. It's easy to say, you don't got a warrant, go away. Uh, but Jose was doing his best to get them to go away, and it wasn't happening. Uh, so ultimately, again, uh, curious to see how it will play out. Ultimately, I did give him my driver's license, knowing that I am pretty well known, and uh, I mean, they could very easily get it off my license. But the Tech Cruise campaign had already uh, tracked me down uh, in South Carolina during the South Carolina primaries, and had put the capital uh, threat assessment unit uh, to harassing my mother. So, in my mind, they already know who I am, and um, so that wasn't spilling the beans. Uh, however, uh, I, you know, I, I didn't want to go beyond. They, they asked for my social security number, um, and I'm like, no, that, that's too far. Uh, that's none of my family. Um, so, uh, ultimately, uh, as they, you know, they got us standing there, um, and they go inside, at which point, we didn't know what was happening at, at that time. Um, but what it was is, you know, there was a commotion. And uh, so there's people upstairs, so that got raided. Uh, the guy up there, uh, his, it's, it's a guy and, a, and his wife and a two-year-old uh, daughter. And uh, so they, they dragged the wife out uh, in her nightie and left the two-year-old alone. Um, which is messed up. And then they went inside and put uh, put a gun in the face of my uh, friend uh, Dan and his girlfriend Brittany Young. And um, which is, I mean, I mean, what can I say? Uh, I mean, what the fuck was that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, that's really the only way to say it. What the fuck was that? I mean, I'm going to use it sparingly, but that is fucking crazy. Um, uh, wildly unconstitutional against the Fourth Amendment, um, and you know uh, when you know Dan came out, obviously he's explaining this to us, and you know, it wasn't that big of a stretch, and we're like, Jesus Christ, I, you know, I, I you know I cannot believe this is happening to us. So they separate Dan and Brittany, and they're uh, interrogating them. Uh, but you know they're they're smart, and uh, you know they I mean they didn't give up anything else. You know, they, they didn't already know. Um, you know eventually they're like. You know, they're telling us that we've thrown water bottles and feces, which is, hey, way to bring it to the gutter. Um, and, of course, all of us across the board don't know what you're talking about. We're in the right. We're utterly in the right. Um, none of this has happened. So, yeah, we can babble to a blue in the face, but we didn't do anything. Right. We right. did nothing. Uh, so, ultimately, it just got to the point where they really couldn't even ask us anything more. So, I started to question them. Well, you know, guys, listen. You brought out 20 cops of varying forces, FBI, ICE, all these guys. You've got two guys with AR-15s, um, 20 uh, law enforcement officials, and you're out here for thrown bottom. And allegedly, I'm guessing horse crap? Yeah, that's um, what I heard, yeah. So, really? And I just, I kept pressing them on that. You can't, I mean, you cannot possibly be out here for that. Tell me what else you suspect us of doing. Because right. certainly you suspect us of committing a crime. Yeah. It must be a large one if you brought out this force. He just kept you know, denying, denying. Well, you don't know everyone who lives here. You don't know. You don't know. And I'm like, that's exactly why I'm asking. And, of course, eventually, uh, we call him the uh, kind of a silver fox guy. Uh, we call him the uh, erectile dysfunction uh, law enforcement <laughs> officer. Because he's just like one of those silver foxes from those um, Viagra ads. Um, and uh, so anyhow, uh, erectile dysfunction, uh, you know, made his way out. And one of the, uh, uh, the female cops came up to us and said, 
Oh, well, I'm, I'm the civil rights liaison. And I want to introduce myself. And we're just thinking to ourselves, this is, what? I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, are you, is this some backwards Orwellian uh, double thing? Can you punch us in the face? Yeah. Um, but no, it's just like, we started to try to ask her uh, a couple questions, and they just kind of walked away. And um, that, that was the extent of it, uh, other than, uh, well, there was uh, seven other houses in the area that we know of that had a similar experience. Right. Um, Obviously, they didn't get on video, uh, but it's all there for everyone to see. Cleveland.com and uh, oh, I want to say Jackie, someone who was a representative from the Cleveland police. I might be getting her name wrong. Double check that. Uh, but made this um, this big press statement saying that we didn't enter with guns out. Uh, we, you know, uh, we didn't enter without a warrant. Uh, and uh, I mean, clearly in the video, you can you can see them go through the door like this. And then at a later point, uh, when it, uh, we actually slowed it down, uh, Dan and Brittany have guns to their backs. They're leading them out that way. And uh, again, we slowed that down. You can see him bring the, it goes up for a second and down. And um, you know, we, we, we just really want to get the news out there so that it doesn't happen to any other people here at the DNC. Or if it does, uh, be, that they're cognizant and have a camera by their bedside. They're aware. That's, I mean, the, the biggest thing I can say is have a camera by your bedside. Is there any uh, is there any legal action that's being taken resulting from what happened to the RNC there? Um, there is. Um, uh, I'm not in charge of that uh, since I have a ton of legal things pending myself. Uh, but uh, they're pouring through the videos and um, and uh, you know some kind of a civil war. Rod, you Rod got, with with you, a D. With a a D. He, he was just uh, going with a B before to yeah, keep it yeah. secret from the police. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So uh, my thanks to Rod, the flower guy. Um, I'm Eric Scott Picard, John Carico filming from the Fifth Column News in Pontiac.